When the velveteen rabbit first came to live with the boy, he wasn't at all real. Oh, yes, he was fat and bunchy, as a rabbit should be. His coat was soft and brown. He had thread whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink satin. But that was all he was. He had no slick new coat of shiny paint, nor a key in his back to make him work. In fact, he was different. And that created problems. <coughs> See here, rabbit. I'm here to tell you the rules of this nursery. Number one, we don't much care for bunchy fake rabbits. Number two, clear off. Number three, um... Sergeant Jones! Uh, yes, sir. Wind this rabbit up and send him on his way. Excuse me, sir. There seems to be no key. This rabbit has no clockwork, sir. He's not real. No clockwork? Transportation unit? And so the velveteen rabbit was banished to the farthest corner of the nursery. shiny tin. Our painted eyes look straight ahead. We know we'll always win. We always keep ourselves well oiled. It really is a must. For if we lack in maintenance, we'll all turn into rust. Just wind us up and point the way and set us to our task. But will we beat our enemy? I'm shocked you have to ask. We caught a mouse and saved the ball. We jumped the clan last night. There were ten of us and one of him. It wasn't much of a fight. Oh, it's fun to be a soldier, all painted black and red. We're glad we fight for this side, the other side just fled. Don't be upset, little rabbit. I've seen them come and I've seen them go. Nothing but clockwork and tick-tock. Figure all that wind-up stuff makes them real. But nobody's gonna love them. Yep, it's love that makes you real. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath, and most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to string necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger and by and by break their mainsprings and pass away. He knew they were only toys. Real. It's not how you're made. It's something that happens to you when somebody loves you. Not just to play with but really loves you. Then you become real. Sometimes it hurts, because being real isn't always easy. It doesn't happen all at once, either. 
it takes a long time. And that's why it doesn't happen to toys that break easily, or have sharp edges, or have to be kept in a box. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you can get loose in the joints. You get downright shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, why, you can't be made ugly, except by the people who don't understand. This will do just fine. Here we are then. A toy for you to sleep with. Rabbits are guaranteed to protect boys, yes, and girls, from storms. That night, and for many nights after, the Velveteen Rabbit slept in the boy's bed. At first, he found it rather uncomfortable. For the boy hugged him very tight, and sometimes he rolled over onto him. He pushed him so far under the pillow that the rabbit could scarcely breathe. And he missed his talks with the skin horse on those long, moonlit nights when all the house was silent. Very soon, the Velveteen Rabbit grew to like staying with the boy. For he'd play and talk to him. They had splendid games all day long. And at night, dropping off to sleep, the boy would hold him tight. And so for the very first time, the Velveteen Rabbit began to feel just a little bit what being real is all about. But not everyone was happy with the Velveteen Rabbit. Right then, something must be done about this stuffed rodent. The boy is spending too much time with it. It'll warp his young mind. Besides, He's not playing with us much these days. All right, men. Execute plan number one. Follow me. <whistles> this is the boy's bedroom. Touch! Nanny, I'm thirsty. I want some water. Go back to bed. I'll bring you some, dear. Uh, right then, uh, uh, fall in, men. We execute plan number two tomorrow night. Me group, back to the nursery. Now go to sleep. Here's your old toy. That's not a toy, Nana. Real. When the little rabbit heard that, he was happy, for he knew that what the skin horse had said was true at last. He was real. The boy himself had said it. That night, he was almost too happy to sleep, and so much love stirred in his little sawdust heart that it almost burst. And into his boot-button eyes that had long ago lost their polish came a look of wisdom and beauty. So that next morning, even Nana noticed when she picked him up. I declare that if that old bunny hasn't got quite a knowing expression. 
Right, men. This evening, plan number six. I, I believe it's number seven, sir. Uh, 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 as I was saying, plan number seven contains an element of surprise. This is a catapult, a simple device that will launch one of us <coughs> deep into enemy territory. Oh, yes, the rabbit will be very surprised. But first, a demonstration. Jones, get on. But, sir, I'm not very good at catapulting, sir. Oh, get up. Like this, Jones. See? Rather like a seesaw, isn't it? What's this lever for, sir? No, Jones, don't... Jones. Yes, sir? You and I must have a long talk. Near the house was the Blackberry Wood, and in the long evenings the boy liked to go there to play after tea. He always took the Velveteen Rabbit with him. But before he wandered off, he made the rabbit a little nest somewhere among the bracken, where he would be quite cosy. Odd-looking rabbit? It is a bit. Do you suppose he's asleep? You ever see a rabbit sleep with his eyes open? Well, beech leaf does. He's a bit weird, though. True. Hey, uh, you want to play? What's wrong with him? Wait a minute. He's not real. Why would anyone want a fake rabbit? I don't know. Oops, someone's coming. Right, men. We must show that rabbit that we are not to be toyed with. Tonight's plan, number 16, is foolproof. Must we, sir? I'm starting to rather like the rabbit, sir. So am I, Jones. But that isn't the point, is it? Right then. Winding squad! Tank squad! Load up! Advance! No, forward again. Oh, yes. Forward again. Right up. Left a bit, Jones. Right up. No, not right. Fall left, Jones. Stop your fall. Oh, help. Now hurry up. Hurry. Careful. Right. Pay attention, man. Oh, dear. Go back. Go right back. Up. Come on, back. Yes. Right. Oh, stop. Yes, sir. Right then. Open the hatch, Jones. Um, sir? The hatch seems to be stuck. Never mind the hatch. Prepare to fire. Yes, sir. Elevation 50 degrees. 50 degrees. Why is 50 it degrees. these toys never get put away before bedtime? Dash it all. I thought I told you not to leave your toys. Oh, no. I must get your parents. No, I must call the doctor at once. Oh, dear. <clears throat> the boy is very ill. He'll need a good deal of rest. No excitement, you understand, and no visitors. <clears throat> We must make every attempt to contain the germs to this room. It was a long, weary time, for the boy was very ill. Day and night, his nana stayed by his side, and the little rabbit's sawdust heart ached so much to see the boy's pain. And he remembered the skin horse saying that sometimes to be real was to hurt. When the boy hugged him close for comfort, he felt very real. 
indeed. Through it all, the tossing and turning, the worrisome, sleepless nights, the little boy needed him most of all. <clears throat> you understand, the books must go. All the clothes from the bed and everything he used while he was sick. Don't worry, dear. We'll have all new things in no time at all. And you'll be going with your parents to the seashore for a holiday tomorrow. Absolutely everything must be burned. Certainly. That would be a good idea. Even this old thing? Surely it can't. That? Why, that's a veritable mass of germs. That, above all, must go. <clears throat> Isn't that what you wanted, sir? What do you take me for, Jones? A barbarian? I'd say it's time for a rescue, eh, Jones? Oh, yes, sir! All right, men. Execute Plan Blue. Get that knob, Jones. I'm trying to... Oh, watch it. Oh, look, look out. out! Oh, sir. Ah, oh! oh. <laughs> Terrible fate for any toy. As night crept over the garden, he thought of the long, sunny days he had spent there with the boy. He saw each day pass before him, each seeming more beautiful than the last. His thoughts turned to his friend, the wise old skin horse, his first real friend. He thought of the wonderful day he first knew he was real. And then he thought of the boy. A deep sadness filled him. Of what use was it to be loved and lose one's beauty and become real if it all ended like this? And a tear, a real tear, trickled down his nose and fell to the ground. A tear can come only with real feelings. And that brought me to you. Don't be sad, little one. There are no endings, only beginnings. Now, we shall begin. I have brought a special friend. He's one of you now. Hey, that's the fake rabbit. Be kind and gentle to him and teach him all he needs to know and he will live with you forever and ever. Every ending holds beginnings and the story goes on. Tales of joy and of tears and of loving someone. But the real world of magic will forever unfold in the heart of a child. Song never feels but you 
Are you sure he was a fake rabbit? Your love was real. And so you were real to the little boy. Now you'll be real to the world, little rabbit. Just like my old bunny. I wonder what happened to him. The one that I lost when I was sick. Come here. Don't be afraid. Hey, don't go away. Only the skin horse knew the truth. But then, he had been in the nursery a long, long time. The world's most beloved nursery rhymes come to life. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cat and the A colorful collage of the classic characters and songs the children have cherished through the ages. An hour of fun-filled fantasy using live actors, animals, Puppets and Pictures, Little Kids Can't Resist, Nursery Rhymes. No one's safe when a cobra rules the garden. The great god Prom put his mark upon all our people. When the first cobra spread his hood to keep the sun off Prom, look and be afraid. And when there's two, that means double trouble. There is everything to be gained by killing the people. When the bungalow is empty, we again will be king and queen of the garden. It's up to the mongoose, Ricky Ticky Taffy, to free everyone from the cobra's reign of terror. He's the only one with reflexes quick enough, instinct and wits sharp enough, and raw courage brave enough to take on the deadly cobras Nog and Naga Ina. Victory over the cobra is only a matter of quickness of eye and quickness of foot. Snakes blow against mongooses jump. And as no eye can follow the motion of a snake's head when it strikes. Ricky Ticky Taffy, the Roger Kipling classic, comes to life in delightful animation narrated by Orson Welles. The motto of the mongoose family is run and find out. And Ricky was a true mongoose. He was once a little ball of clay. But look at what Gumby's doing today. I want to go out for an adventure. And adventure's what he gets when he goes for the ride of his life, mows the lawn, and literally enters storybook land. It's the little green guy that kids can't resist. 
Well, most kids. With his pony pal Pokey, his silly dog Nopey, and the cutest little creatures all made out of clay. Children will love this all-new edition of Gumby, Volume 11. While hunting in the forest, a young boy is enchanted by a beautiful fairy princess and her mystical, magical friends. They take him to their kingdom, where the girl's father explains that once fairyland was bright and gay. But all that changed one horrible night when the shadow monster appeared and turned fairyland into gloom. The king sent the boy on a dangerous journey, battling the dark and evil creatures of the swamp. He must save fairyland from its wicked new ruler. But the boy knew he had met his match when he came upon the sinister fortress of the shadow monster. Will the young hunter become the shadow's next victim in this exciting adventure of good versus evil? It's mystical, magical fairies. Yeah.